Today we're going to be checking out the 2020 Road Track Slumber. This is the Pop Top Edition unit. This has the extended uh, coach, so you have a little bit more space than you would in most of these vehicles. They have the full uh, pop out steps on this. All you have to do is open up the door and the step will pop that out. Uh, this is on the Pro Max 3500 chassis, so you get that good front wheel drive fuel economy chassis. On this side here, we have our uh, water heater and your furnace. You can open this up. You'll see inside here you have the on switch. This turns on your water heater itself, so you're able to use the main controls inside the coach after you turn on the battery disconnect. Right now it's currently winterized, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Just press it close to close it. You have the two handles here. Lift up and out loop. Down below here you have your valves. You have your black valve and your gray valve. Right here is for your macerator hose. So it's going to be the key right here. This is your G12 key. Now that that's open, you're going to have to kind of jiggle this around to get it out. So, as it's a tight fit, now keep in mind, try not to break these tabs because these are the only side that's going to hold it on. Inside this compartment here, you're going to have your macerator hose. Here's your macerator hose end. You can put this in the dump station. Once this is in the dump station, you have this valve that's over here. This is going to be for the whole macerator. You open that up. Take off the cap end. Put that inside the dump station. Now that opened that up to there. That's going to allow the black tank, your toilet water, to flow into there once that's done. At your entry door, you have your waste discharge pump. You depress that in, and that will pump out the good stuff out of there. Make sure you use RV toilet paper so it does not clog it. And that macerator, make sure you use enough water in the system. Once you're done dumping the black, go ahead and pull the gray valve, which is on the left-hand side in the back. <coughs> All right, here's your black. Here's your gray. And that's all gonna go into this box here which will fill up for the macerator and pump into here, and that will come all the way out. So black's on the left, gray's on the right behind. If you want a gravity dump, all you have to do is pull on this after removing this cap. You have uh, regular tires on the front and rear, so you can check your tire pressure before all your uh, large travels. All the way in the back. This is our outside shower. This is 751K. So you have your hot and cold. Your hot's controlled by your thermostat piece, which I'll show you on the interior for the water here. And the cold's just from your cold source, either from your water pump or from your city connection. This unit is a 30 amp service unit. So you'll have your short cord. You can get the adapters to plug this into 15 amp or 20 amp, which is your household style of plug. All you have to do is match up the little L that's on the end here. <coughs> and that goes into this connection here. Plug it in, turn it to the right slightly, and lock that on and then plug this into a 30 amp service. Just do that on this side. Now on the end of this, this has a little blue light. Oh, you got your rear doors here, you got your uh, hitch with a backup camera, the big box on the top is your air conditioner. 
Your water inlet is right here. This is for your city connection. So you can fill uh, all your faucets and toilets through that. Uh, through pressure from the outside source like a faucet. We have our low point drain for our water connection in here. As you can see right now, it's currently filled with any freight. On the driver's side, sorry, passenger side here, we have our outside light. We have windows to the outside, our main entry door and step. On this side here, this is actually lights up. Under here is where your you have a high pressure propane line and your propane. So to the right, you shut it off. To the left, you open it up. You have your fill and your bleed. You always want to make sure that the bleed is closed and tight. And the little black box there is going to be your regulator encased with the straps. Uh, the high pressure regulator needs a quick connect, and then you'll need a regulator for the equipment that you're planning on using, as that's high pressure. Um, these sides do have the full entry steps to open up with the door being open. And it's actually your doors and everything like that. Uh, give me a few minutes, let me get this all set up, and then we'll check out the interior. All right, so right above me is the awning switch, which I'll show you when we're going over the main control panel in here. So that brings it in by using the 12 volt disconnect and the batteries. Now, it extends pretty far out. And we have these legs that you can use to help stop it from getting too windy. So you open it up with the little orange tab bring it back slightly and reclose the tab. Next, we're going to lift up on the armature to bring it out. Like that. Rotate. Uh, this way, put the one of these little arms inward. And then we'll reopen up this orange handle, releasing this leg. And we have these little pieces on the chassis. We're going to lift up on the bar, put the foot in, push back until that bar is over top. Then we can adjust and close the red latch again. And that stops our awning from shaking. And then you just repeat the step on the back as well. Then to put it away, it's just reverse of the same steps, like so. I suggest putting the foot back and locking it somewhat back. We fold the foot peg to the bottom. You want to line these up because that won't go in properly. So line these little fins up with the end. Make sure all the way in, make sure this foot's flat. Now I need a little bit more space. So all I have to do is open it up orange handle, bring that in, now that that's in, I'm going to push out until the foot locks in the end, and then lock the orange handle in place, that prevents this here from coming out of its track, so I see that's a little loose, so I'm going to push back on here, push that forward, and lock that in place again. That makes it more secure and less rattles as you're going down the road. So it's not clipped. So this one doesn't have the awning light on it, but it doesn't even have the wind sensor on this one. And then we just push it in and it retracts. I do recommend you have this door closed so you have the proper space in between the two edges so they don't hit.
and you just push it until it's closed off. That's nice and secure. Uh, you do have the main entry screen door, which is helped by the two latches here. Just open these up. Screen door, door comes down. You have two zippers on either side. You don't have to worry about opening and closing the zipper as you do have a little handle here to pull and then you can open and close. And you have the Velcro to help keep it secure if you have pets in the camper. Like so. Gotta keep all the bugs out. Obviously you'd have this door closed. And then inside here you have patio lights, so that gives you your front and rear patio lights. And then you can also turn off the power step, so if you close the door, the step out front will stay on. And uh, give me a moment, and I'm just going to roll this back up. Now you've at the house, getting ready to go for a trip, or you just got set. What you're going to want to do is you have these two buttons that say reset, off and on. You're going to go ahead and turn these uh, off ones on. If they don't illuminate and engage right away, you're going to go and hold these resets until they engage and then let go once they you hear them latch. Now you have a battery disconnect on the left hand side here that turns off the lights but keeps the batteries on. So that's just going to turn off everything on the interior. Um, you can leave that on while you're going down the road that helps keeps, keep it charged while you're going. When you're plugged in, you must have your inverter to the on position so that it turns on the inverter to allow charging of the batteries. You have your battery lights, which have an illuminated switch, so you can know that they're on from the exterior. You have a water pump switch that would turn on the water pump, bringing water to your faucets and toilet if you're running just strictly off the fresh tank. And we have our power step off. What that does is turns off the step so the step stays extended uh, when you're opening and closing the door at the campsite. So if it's inclement weather, you don't have to worry about the step going away and going for a leap and falling out of the unit. Now at the entry door here, we have our handle so you can open and close that. The Velcro for these window blinds. And these just get pushed to the side. Um, these ones do do move the handles on this side, which is just a little push handle. So if you wanted to, too, just has little buttons that you can push. And bring this all the way over to one side. Now, when you're cooking, I do suggest to leave this open so that you have some air to escape. Well, that's the wrong one air to escape or bring fresh air in while cooking with the propane gas. Um, I think we'll go over the pop top next. So when you're using your pop top, you want to make sure that it hasn't snowed and you don't have a lot of weight on top as it can close if you put too much weight on the top of the roof. You have these straps. These straps help you pull it down. It's on the opposite side here. So when you're trying to bring it down, you can pull it down. These do have clips on it, so if you want to remove them once you get it up, uh, just so it's a little bit less stuff hitting you, or driving, you can take them off. Just I'd suggest putting them back on and tucking them up so you don't lose them. Now there is safety straps. Here, let me borrow the camera. We do have safety straps here, so you're going to want to push this end, which is a, like a luggage safety strap. And then you have this little handle here, you lift up, rotate, that releases it, so you're able to bring it up. Fold this flat, there is a little magnet right here that you can tuck up like so to keep that up and out of the way and keep it nice and safe. And you repeat that step for the opposite side, which is a little bit harder to reach since there's this nice lovely bathroom in the way, which is all the way up here. 
and then you have that strap behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that one. Now that that's done, all I have to do is push up on it. Now I might need to get the ladder from the rear. Now this ladder just sits on the back of the seats on the floor. There's a little extension that you just drop. Like so. The hooks are actually on the side. Oh, yep. So we have our hooks on this side here. They change them every model. These ones have safety latches on them. All right, you turn. Like so, make sure you lock them in place so if you're on it, it doesn't come off. This here just rests on it. And we lift that all the way up. Now, up top of here does not have any real lights. Um, it's primarily just a tent. So let me get my phone out to get some light in it. So you're gonna have to be a little nimble to get up top here. But it's just like a regular tent. You have your windows so you can see outside of the unit. You have your front window. This one here has a window and it also has a screen window and you can use it also as a fire escape if you need to. have velcro tabs so you can roll them up and this side here is a vent vented one passenger side is just a uh, piece of plastic up top you do have 12 volt outlets and your skylight with opener so you pull this down And then you can bring her open. Once it's open, this side here, you have your plug net. Which you have to strap on here so you don't get the bugs. And it is very touchy. And then you have your uh, cover for that side. I'm gonna give you back and then we'll go over the rest of the unit. All right, now above me here, the only light to really shine in there other than like your personal devices is this bar <coughs> light right here at the hatch. So you have a low and then you have a high that's the only real light that you're gonna have there. Now, when you're trying to lower this, uh, you just pull in the straps, pull those downward. These have little uh, tabs. Or, sorry, just hang me the whole stand. You have these little red tabs right here. You wanna make sure those are inward. Because if they're outward, they don't close properly. Now that you got this closed, you want to make sure that the tent's out of the way of the latching areas. We're going to 
down and relatch them. And that's for both sides then. Now, since that's just like a tent, it's kind of the same scenario. If you put the tent away wet, you're gonna have to open it up in the very next dry day and let it air out so it does not uh, gain mildew on the inside. Or if you're gonna store it for a long time, make sure you try to air it out as much as possible, honestly, to keep all the mildew and everything off of it. Now, all these lights inside this unit are just push style lighting that's all the way throughout uh, you can turn off the door light as well uh, let me get this out of the way so we'll have some space to demo the unit to you because we do have two people in here and it is very spacious with the extended model uh, talking about extensions, we do have a countertop extension right here at the entry door. To make it stay all the way flat, you're going to have to kind of force it up just slightly to make this flat. There's two little uh, latches on the bottom. Lift up, push in. And you can latch it and then push it all the way down to secure it. On the very end here, you have a USB, you have a 12 volt outlet, and a 120 outlet as well. Right here is our Dometic sink. Lift up the glass, lift up the, the faucet in. You have cold and you have hot. When you're ready to store it, pull the handle all the way downward and push down the shower head. You know, shower head, faucet head, and then you have your nice top. And underneath this one, you have your two burner stove. Make sure you have your propane on. Rotate it. It's just like an old style Coleman one. So push in to let gas flow in. Use your sparker to ignite. That's the little one. Let me do the big one, which is on the right side. There you go, so the big one first. Then we'll do the little one. So it's kind of a rule of thumb. Make sure you use the higher gas rated one first than the little one. As you can see, what can happen there? You have that little bit of a spark of a gas. That's only because I filled this area up with gas and it didn't meet the right spark requirement. Since I was just turning on the gas outside, this was the first point. Now, when you do that, that allows uh, propane to go through the system, <coughs> so that helps make everything run a little bit smoother. So we have another 120 uh, section here. Uh, one other thing, make sure you leave this open after running it for a little bit, just so it doesn't shatter the glass. We have storage underneath here with a waterless trap for our sink. We have a nice little shelf. Some more storage in this here, a large storage compartment. Above me here, we just have our standard microwave. Right here is gonna be our closet to use all of these style of doors. Push in to release the knob, and then you can open it up. So you have a nice area for your uh, clothes. Right here is going to be our table leg. This is going to be the table leg for the back, which is on the floor here. So right here's our table leg location. Has its cover. You just pick out the cover. You have this little end. This goes in here. And I wasn't lucky. I didn't get it in, in line first. So I'm going to make that nice and large. Turn to the right. 
give it a little pull up to make sure I'm engaged. And then you can tighten it, like so. Now we have that section there started. Uh, all the windows on the back section have these two blind style. So you have your screen and you have your blind. To separate them, just have the window, open up this latch. So you have your screen blind, and then you have your window. It's actually kind of warm in here for me right now. Doing all this talking, all this hot air. So I'm going to do the same for this side as well. Now underneath here you have all your uh, reading lights that you just push on by pushing inward. While I'm getting up, we have all of our overhead compartments. Inside the overhead compartments, we have our bag. This bag has all of our goodies inside of it. We have our spare tire piece, which we'll need to get the spare tire down in the case of emergency. Comes with an extra belt. Now these uh, chassis have an underhead hood generator, so it's not going to use the standard uh, serpentine belt for the uh, alternator and it has a specialty tool that comes with it so you can replace it since it doesn't leave a lot of clearance to get to it. So you got an extra belt. Now over in this cabinet here, this big box right here is going to be our solar panel controller as this has the solar panels on top of that pop-up. Uh, rule of thumb, if you're trying to find a nice spot that you're not uh, restricted on parking, I'd park one way during half the day and as the sun's falling turn it around to follow that since you're going to get that perfect uh, consumption angle off of that style of roof now if it's laying flat you're going to get that all day it's just going to be lower input when it's lower in the horizon it'll have its maximum input at high noon so inside here this is the chemical that you want to use to uh, eat up all the good things in the toilet. That helps keep it clean and clear. Um, make sure you use the RV toilet paper. I'm going to be putting all this in this compartment here. Uh, in here also should be our remote for our TV. We have all of our RAM uh, documentation, so you can read this on the manuals. You'll get a nice little Fix it's a screwdriver, so if you need to tighten up a screw, you're able to. You get your, uh, this one here is your HDMI piece for the DVD player, as that's a 12 volt DVD player. You get another little screwdriver that comes for your Belmar system. That's your system that keeps the controller for your charging system underneath your chassis. I bet you they have the remote in the entertainment box up top there, so we'll check that out. So on the passenger side, up here, yep. this is our entertainment box. So inside here we have our remote, we have our bunny ear booster, which is in the back here with the red light. Now when you're trying to use the bunny ears, you're going to Make sure this button's depressed with this red light on. Turn it off if you're trying to use the cable hookup on the exterior. So right now we're going to use bunny ears since we don't have a cable hookup. And this one is the model without the DVD player. Um, so that other paperwork there was for the TV then. So just another large cabinet on that side. We have our TV on this side with, with its holder and cover. So this is the Sanyu TV. So this here is on a wall mount as well. So we can unlock that. That allows it to flow properly. So if we had the front seat rotated, we could use it up front. It's kind of hard to see because it's kind of crammed where we're at and whatnot. Uh, so you can use it around. As you can see, we're getting a good clear channel, and that's all from the air itself.
Uh, in the back, this bed, this bench here turns into a bed. Now that controller is over on the driver's side corner, right here. These here you can actually rotate. So right here, this is going to be your bed lift, and this is going to be your temperature temperature control. I'll show you where the table end is. The table end just gets popped right on here. So to make this a bed, we have this like such. Just push this down. Puts the bench all the way down. And then we can take and locate the uh, pieces that go right here to make this a very large bed. bed for two. Uh, I'm going to say you could fit three people in this bed if you really need to. And when you're done, you can put it all back together. Now underneath this side here, we have a very large compartment. To put whatever you'd like in this one. This here sits right on top of that again. And your cover goes on. On this side here, we have another little storage area. Now make sure that you don't put anything that could fall through these vents because inside this compartment here is where our inverter is. So this is where the power inverter is. So this takes 12 volt, changes it into 120. It takes 120, puts it into 12 volts. And then where the table is, I'm just gonna do ease of access, go outside and go grab it from that back door. All right, now I was talking about that table. That table sits on this passenger side rear compartment area. So then we have our table, our table leg. I showed you how to put this in. All you have to do is just easily clip it in and it's ready to be a table, like such. Now, obviously you'd be in there. I'm just trying to do this for shortness of demo. And then you just pull up to release it. And this would go back in its compartment. And this sits back on the door here. Also in the back, all the way down here, you do have your emergency piece. Can you put the bed up just a little bit? There we go, that's good. This here is going to be where your jack is located and your other components. So that's your pump jack, your scissor lift, and your other components to either tow or change your flat. You do have your nice instructions on how to do that. A nice little carrier case for that. And this side doesn't have anything. Also in the very back here, we have our window blinds. And that's in this bag here. Some more lights for reading. Uh, we have our rear speakers here. On both sides there is 
USB outlets, 120 outlet, and your 12 volt car style outlet. Um, and then I'll go over the air conditioner in just a moment. I'm just going to close this up and then we'll go over the top of that. One thing I kind of, it's over top of my head that I forgot to mention is you have your rear screen, kind of just the same concept as your front one. You have a blackout area, you have an inside screen. The zipper is on top. On top, yeah. So you can have the fresh air come in. It's kind of funny the side, the way I'm doing this one. Like so. Uh, it's being washed currently, so that's why there's water on it. And then you zip down the sides so you can have your screen. That does have a weight on the bottom of it, but also this does have zippers, so if you needed to, you could still pass through it this way with having it all the way zipped up. Now I'm officially going to close this up. Uh, on the back you also have some pockets that you can put some things if you need to or chose to. And if you just wanted to zip this piece up, uh, you can leave this main door section closed if you're going to use this as more of a tote. And you can just uh, tidy up the screen section to the clips so you don't have to do the whole door every time. I'm going to close this up and then we'll go over the air conditioning controls. All right, so on our left-hand side here, we have our Dometic air conditioner controls to power this. Make sure you're plugged into 110 if you're gonna use the air conditioner. I'm gonna hit mode. You have auto, so you can change this to high, low, or auto. That's gonna be your fan control, so if you put it on high, it will kick on the fan and just recirculate the, the air inside the unit. Then we have the little snowflake, this is cool. So set your temperature which you would like the temperature to be at and it will run the air conditioner which is in the very rear here. There. Now this does have vents that you can open and close and you do have serviceable uh, vents on the side which you just need to pull down and there's just uh, plastic kind of foam vents in there that you just dust off. So we have our furnace. Our furnace is a, a LP propane furnace. That furnace is right here. It turns on this guy right here that's going to blow hot air. And that's going to use propane at 12 volts. So you just need to make sure you have your battery disconnect on and your propane on. And make sure you have a fully charged battery. And then you just set this to the temperature you'd like it to be and it will have forced hot air come out, which gives you a nice uh, warm environment to sleep when it's super cold out. And then the last one, when you push mode, you'll see off and that will just turn off the thermostat. This is our newer cold refrigerator. To open up your refrigerator, you have this little push tab up here to open it up. So this is a 12 volt refrigerator. So you turn this on here, that will start allowing the liquid to cool down. This is a compressor style fridge. Up top here is your freezer. I'd say this freezer here is only enough maybe for a couple lunchable uh, frozen meals up here. And it does come with an ice tray. Uh, one key note is that this will condensate. So when you're going to store it, make sure you put some paper towels in there and put some paper towels at the base of your refrigerator to catch any condensation that you have coming from this unit. Even though it has its own little catch tray for water, you're going to want to make sure that you drain this out. And if you're anything like me, I normally drain it on myself. And then there is a little uh, door piece. Here, let me pour that real quick. Right here, that you can lift up. So if you're trying to put a full gallon, half gallon of milk in here, it'll fit. And if 
you really need a lot of space, just take out the screw back here and then this here will come out the shelf, vice versa. And just push it until it latches so it doesn't really come open in transit. Uh, you can have the door shake a little bit. This is a rolling house going down the, the road. You're gonna expect noises and things not being 1000% secure because you never can really secure everything unless you bolt and screw everything down. Right here is our large drawer. Same style as the top drawer. Plush to lock it so it doesn't come open in transit. This here is our spice rack. So you can put your goods in here. Um, at the bottom of the furnace, we have a propane and a CO2 detector. Give that a little test once a month. Make sure it's operational. And make sure that that light goes green again. That indicates that that's functioning and operational. This here, these two doors, that's gonna be our, our toilet and shower. This toilet and shower has a lock. Lift that up, that releases pressure on, on it. I'm gonna put this in the back of the coach. We can open up these doors. Either bifold doors. So we're gonna have our toilet and our shower. Gonna do a little shimmy around here. So we have our toilet here, and then our shower is actually up top here with our light. We have our sink for here. Inside here you have your drain plug, and then you'll have a drain plug on the right hand side of the toilet as well, same as this one here. You have your shower surround. Sometimes catches. But she's brand new. There we are. And then you'll notice that these have little Velcro spots. We have our mirror, which we didn't take off the cover for that quite yet, just because we don't want to make sure we get don't get any scratches on this mirror before we get delivery of it. So these come like so. Now there's these little latches. I'll throw that back in place. You have this little latch here. This latch is actually for this here. So when you need to take a dump, dump. It latches open like so. So it gives you that shoulder room since I'm very broad shouldered. Now it is large enough for me to go myself. And it has the convenient toilet paper holder right here. Um, with this unit, you do have to turn on your faucet and then pull up on the stopper. That actually allows flow into the shower head here. Um, a lot of times I suggest that after people take showers to put the shower heads on the floor until they stop dripping so you don't have that annoying drip going almost all night because uh, water finds its own level. And also if you have this loop, it's gonna end up down below this piece here. But it will drain back into the faucet as well as come out the shower head. You do have some storage for your uh, soaps and whatnots. And just to clean, I'll just use a mild soap detergent to clean your walls and everything like that. Make sure you turn this off as well before closing the doors. And you always have to close this door first before closing this one all the way. And don't forget to lock it. So these mirrors on the ends don't come off. And this is gonna be a nice snug fit so you don't get the nice, super loud vibrations going down the road. And then we'll go over the front of the chassis here and I'll show you how to rotate the seat. Now to rotate these front seats here, you have these yellow handles, but first things first is you wanna bring this seat forward then you can depress the yellow tab and rotate around. Now it doesn't lock with it rotated, so try to keep that in mind when you're trying to sit down on it as it's gonna be higher than the regular floor level. And it's the same for the driver's seat as well. 
I'll turn that one. And this one here only rotates so much. So if you're trying to have some company, you're still able to have company. Now to adjust the back rests, I'll let you see it on this side. You have this rotator here to adjust it front and back. This here is going to be your lumbar support. And then we have here, it's going to be front to back. And then to put that down, pull on it and sit on it. And this one here is going to be the front side to adjust that. And then to lock it back in place, just turn it all the way around and then put the seat to the position you'd like it. You have your armrests. Inside the armrests you have a little uh, roller that adjusts up and down where it stops. So you can have it higher or lower to your preference. And then you have your headrest adjustment up and down. Uh, I'm gonna reposition the seat and then we can go over our dash. To engage AutoStar on this unit, which is uh, used when trying to keep your batteries charged and you're away from the vehicle for a minimal amount of time, long stays, you may have to leave the unit plugged into 110 Make sure it's charged or shuttered off and leave everything off and put everything that's in your fridge in either a cooler or take it home with you to put it in the fridge at home. To engage auto start, I'm going to turn on this switch here and make sure we have a quarter tank of gas, hood closed, doors I uh, believe have to be closed, and um, emergency brake has to be on, which is on the left hand side of the driver's seat. And then we have an auto start, which is going to be on this fob key here. And that one there, we got to lock the doors. And then we can push the key and hold it. That's going to engage the auto start. You want to make sure that you don't hit the brakes. Uh, this one here saying check tire pressure. That's only because we've been outside in the cold and brought it back in and we change the tire pressure inside the unit. Um, that there will be fixed before you take it up, meaning tire pressures will be checked and you'll be already set to go. We have uh, to force stop an auto start if you need to. You can either hit the brake or push the key on the fob. Push and hold it, my apologies. And that will turn off the auto stop also. If, let's say, you have the auto start on and you're moving around and you hit the brake, that also will stop it. The same as pulling off the hood or running out of gas to a quarter tank or de-depressing uh, de the emergency brake, putting that down. Um, when you have it auto started, you can do with this fob as well. Nope, you cannot. When you already have it auto started, like so, to keep it on to ready for transit, put the key in the ignition, turn it to the on position, and then it will stay on the whole time. You do not need this uh, underhood generator uh, switch on to charge the chassis while you are running the coach. All you need is to have the 12 volt system to the on position. Uh, with the chassis here, we have all of our steering wheel commands, we have our phone, we have our selections uh, up and down, we have our volume up and down as well. We also have mute, which will mute the radio. And we have our command center, so when you want to make voice commands, you can do so. Uh, we have our wipers on the right-hand side, our turn signals on the left with our headlight controls, and pull back for high beam. 
on the left hand side lower is our cruise control which you can activate by rotating the outer rim upward and then you can set by pushing it up or resume by pushing it down uh, that's on as long as you have the indicator on the dash obviously we all know cars have horns on the left hand side we have our mirror controls our fold in mirrors so both of these mirrors here can fold in and fold out we have both window controls and our door lock uh, key so when you want to lock the door you can do so and you can unlock and lock on the dash or four ways this here is our fog light control so when you have the key with the unit on you can push the fog lights on and off here ESC is your traction control we have our tow haul mode so the tow haul mode helps you out with uh, kind of engine braking we have our drive and then if you push it over that puts you into uh, semi automatic push it down to lower the gear push it up to bring the gears up and the gears will be indicated on the dash here what gear you are in and if it feels that you're in a too low a gear it will force it into a lower gear but it's not going to upshift for you so keep that in mind if you knock it over you could potentially put your motor at risk by over revving the motor so it's best just to leave it in drive unless inclement weather you need the lower gear to go slow uh, with reverse you do have the backup monitor that automatically comes on regardless of this if it's off on or using another feature and then we have our park we have our uh, AC fan or temperature control our vents our rear defroster and our front defroster with this all the way to the right we have our air conditioner as long as we have a fan on that to cold we have our air conditioner which give you cold air out of here you have your vents you can turn them uh, with the O that means they're open with them solid they're closed uh, for the dash radio there is a uh, AUX down at the bottom here and you have AUX and USB there and then you have a USB charge and outlet here and then we have our dash radio power button here volume mute you can turn the screen off if that's bothering you at night we have a radio or media so you can have USB you can have Bluetooth you can have AUX you have your navigation so this is navigation by TomTom Tom. Uh, you can hit that there so you can search and find your location you can s scroll around you can zoom in with the plus and minus then you get all your road names and whatnot you can go into here to get to find your settings and everything change all your appearances uh, as you please I do read up on it through your owner's manual and then we have our phone so you need to pair your phone and you can do that in settings and then you uh, make your pair, pair device you click add device as long as you're in park uh, you go check for you connect on your phone put in the pin code and then you can download your contacts if you have a iPhone you can link it for Siri so you can say hey Siri and it'll pick it up then we have if you press more you can see the outside temperature press the clock to have the clock you can have the compass northeast west south you have your rear camera and then we have
our trip so we can see our current range, our trip A and trip B. Um, over here we have our settings button, so there is where we can change our settings for our time. So we have our clock and date, set the time of format, set this to 6.16, that's p.m. You can set that to 12 or 24, shoot, uh, it's set, so that's good. So now it's set. Uh, you can set your date, so it's definitely not February 17, 21, and it's February 11. 11. Done. So now all the stuff on the dash itself will be proper and correct. So that's how you change this here's time for there and for this unit as well. Everything that's read on here is actually controlled by this unit here. So if you decide to get an aftermarket unit, you're going to get an aftermarket unit that is compatible and has a module to do so, and that's all to your discretion. Uh, you can put your voice to make voice response um, units, you can change your units, and you can change your displays, your touch screen beeps, and that's and you have your radio, your radio, you have your AM, FM, Sirius, XM. Right now we're inside so it doesn't get a signal. We have our AM, FM, you can change your channels here or you can change them up here. Uh, you can do all your presets. You can find the info on it to figure out what it is. And then you can set all your audio, fader, equalizers, loudness. Do your speed adjust. So your speed adjust is how much it changes per the speed or volume that you're going. Bounce and fade, obviously. And your equalizer, so you can set it up so it comes in a little bit clearer. So, so you can have better quality. This does have tweeters and six inch speakers in the door. Uh, and that's up front here. And then over here you have your browser enters and scrollers as well for changing the channel. Uh, got cup holders and I think that pretty much covers everything up in the front uh, except for our uh, light here. So you can turn it on or turn it off so it doesn't open with the door or leave it in the center. So we'll turn on and off with the door and then we have the left and right map light. You got your visors and then up above us here this is where all of our 120 and our 12 volt fuses are with a resettable GFI breaker that's all the way up top here that's right here and that covers everything on this unit uh, We'll just do a quick overview of the underhood dash, and I did forget one compartment, which is kind of a hard compartment to find sometimes, and that's right here. This actually opens up, and you have your compartment right here. So we'll just, I'll show you underneath the hood, just to go over where all the basics are of the automobile is. Now on this side, this is where your hood release is gonna be. You're gonna just pull that down. That's gonna release the front hood. Also on this side, you do have your gas tank right on the driver's side. Underneath the hood in the center, we have this little latch. Go ahead and lift this up. Yeah, hood prop. So underneath here, you're going to have your power steering. You have your window washer fluid. You have your Belmar system, so make sure you don't lean anything on that. We have our antifreeze and then we have our brake fluid right here this is going to be the tab where we have our positive side and then our ground is going to go right here if you ever have to jump start this for any reason this here is the piece to tell the Belmar that the hood is closed so that no one gets caught or snagged underneath without anyone behind the wheel to shut it off um, this does have the diagram to show you where the belts go 
since it is a revised model and you, if you take it into service to anywhere else, they'll be able to tell, know how to put it on. Um, this section here is for your air filter, so your air filter is going to go in this big bad boy. Um, and that's pretty much everything you really need to know. Everything else you can find online, or if you contact RAM, you'll be able to get everything that you need to know on this specific chassis, which is ProMaster 3500 chassis. And that kind of concludes everything on this unit, as we've gone over most of everything in this unit. Um, if you have any other questions, concerns, feel free to give us a call here, press for service to talk to service, or you can even contact your uh, salesman for any other questions.